from Earlham, Iowa. News anchor, Gable Johnson. Field reporter, Taylor Williamson. And Lexi Kliegel with sports. We are proud to present EARL News Network. Good afternoon, everyone. I am lead anchor Gable Johnson, and you are watching EARL News Network. Today, we have some great stories for you about all that's been happening in Earlham schools recently. So let's get started. The first story we have today is about the school policy reinforcements in Earlham High School. The main reinforcements that have been a recent focus are the restriction of using any water bottles that are not of clear complexion, banning the use of backpacks in the classroom, and preventing students to go to other classrooms during the middle of a current period without a pass from the teacher. These reinforcements have been made to improve safety amongst both teachers and students while creating less distractions throughout the day. Although these reinforcements have been made to better the school and the classroom environment, many students have thought negatively about them. With all that being said, our Taylor Williamson had the opportunity to interview both Miss Knight, one of the administrators involved with the policy reinforcements, and also a few of the students in Earlham High School about their own opinions on the policy. Take it away, Taylor. Thank you, Gable. The school policy is one that is appreciated by teachers, but disliked by some students. I'm here with Ms. Knight, principal of Earlham Senior High School, to discuss this policy. Some students are willing to argue that they don't have enough time to go to their lockers in between classes. What do you have to say about that? I can understand the students' frustration that they may not have enough time. I've actually timed myself leaving my office and going all the way up to the third floor, chatting with two teachers, and coming back down, stopping for a drink at a water fountain, and getting back to my office in four minutes. If I can do it, I feel that other students can do it. Why is having backpacks in the classroom a safety concern? What if the students were to put the backpacks on and sit in their desk? Would it still be an issue? Because some students have said that that's what they would do. You know, I, I think that's a, an out-of-the-box thinking for a solution <laughs> there, and I commend the students for coming up with some other ideas. Um, however, I feel that that would deter from their learning because if you have some large thing sitting on your back, it's truly the monkey on your back and you wouldn't be able to focus on your learning in the classroom, which is the ultimate thing here. Um, I really don't think it's a big deal to put everything there. The school bought nice laptop bags mm -hmm. with all the items and so that can come to the room and that way everything is handled in an appropriate manner. I know that this policy was put into place about five years ago. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it's such a big issue now? You know, honestly, I was trying to think about that at the beginning of the year when I noticed more and more, and I think um, I'll take full ownership. We had roughly 15 new high school students, and we did not explain the policy to them. A lot of schools are so large, they don't provide laptops, they don't provide mm -hmm. bags or anything, that they truly have to carry their backpacks from place to place because there's not enough lockers for them. Right. I did not educate those new students coming in. That's on me. And I think when other people saw that, they're like, oh, the policy must have changed. And I think it was just, you know, you know, like fish. They all swim together, so I think that's what happened there. Is there anything else you'd like to mention to the student body or the faculty about this policy? Um, I guess the biggest thing is that it's just a simple policy meant to help us learn and get to class and get going with our education and not get embroiled in what I consider small items. Um, I'd rather we focus on doing our best and being involved in activities and, and being Earlham kids who can take pride in their learning. Thank you, Miss Knight. Absolutely, thank you. I'm here with Devin Hensley, a junior from Earlham High School. Devin, how do you feel about the policy regarding backpacks? Uh, I don't like it at all. I'm very unorganized. I don't have all my utensils for my classes, so it's just not a good thing. I'm here with Chelsea Hildenbrand, a senior at Earlham High School. Chelsea, how do you feel about the policy regarding backpacks? I feel like I don't need to carry a backpack to from class to class because I have enough time to walk to my locker and get my books and get to class in time. So you disagree with the students that say they need a backpack to stay organized and do well in class? Yes. There you have it. It was very interesting to hear perspectives from very different positions. I hope that everyone has a new understanding about this policy because it looks like it's here to stay. This is Taylor Williamson with EARL News Network. Back to you, Gable. Thanks, Taylor. Our next story of the day is about the recent FFA trip. 
The troop consisted of eight FFA members and Mr. Irving, who is the agriculture teacher and the FFA advisor at Earlham, going to National FFA Convention in Louisville, Kentucky. The purpose of the trip was to experience FFA on the national level and also be exposed to Louisville's culture. When I asked Cassie Bond, one of the eight FFA members that went on the trip, about what they learned from the trip, she responded with, as a whole, we learned a lot from National Convention. One of the most important things we learned was that there is no stereotypical FFA member, and that FFA is a big melting pot of kids from every sort of background. It sounds like the trip was very beneficial, and that the students had a great time. With more on the story, our Taylor Williamson recently met with Mr. Irving to talk about the FFA as a whole and his thoughts on the trip. Thanks, Gable. I'm here with Mr. Irving, a very dedicated and committed FFA advisor. Today I'll be addressing the recent trip to Kentucky and all the benefits of being an FFA. So, Mr. Irving, why do you feel that it's important to be an FFA? Well, I think it's important to be an FFA because it gives students a chance to learn not only about agriculture, but about leadership, public speaking, um, career preparation, things like that. We do so many things that help kids in the real world. So what did you all learn at National Convention in Louisville, Kentucky? Well, we stopped at several locations on the way down there. We stopped at uh, the Caterpillar plant, learned a little bit about the mechanics side of things, as well as a dairy farm and Churchill Downs where the Kentucky Derby is held. So it's kind of the animal science side of things as well as went to workshops regarding things from world hunger to, you know, confidence building and, and leadership. So why is going on this specific trip beneficial to your students? Well, the students get to see 60,000 other people just like them, all wearing the corduroy jacket, and they're all passionate about agriculture and the real world ag issues that are very much part of our world. I mean, everybody's got to realize that this is something we're going to have to deal with, but you're surrounded by people who care about this mm -hmm. just as much as you do. Is there anything else you'd like to tell me about the FFA program and National Convention? Well, National Convention specifically is just such an exciting time. I hope everyone that's in FFA gets a chance to go at some point or another. Um, it really, com nothing compares to it. It's, it's a week-long you know, time of, of just fun and learning and bonding, especially as a chapter and getting to see people from all across the country that, that you know, like I said, that are really passionate about this. And, you know, FFA in general itself is a uh, kind of a, a fraternity of, of its own and we, we all, you know, bond together and stick together. So uh, it's something I've always enjoyed since I was a kid and that's why I teach it now. The National Convention trip sounds not only like a blast, but also a great learning experience. This is Taylor Williamson with EARL News Network. Back to you, Gable. Thanks, Taylor. The next topic on our agenda is about the Earlham Band and the upcoming winter concert. The Earlham Band is known to be one of the best in the entire state and is led by 12 great seniors. To say the least, they have had another great season. At the State Marching Band Contest in October, they earned their sixth consecutive Division I rating for their performance, which is very impressive. They also participated in the Covered Bridge Festival Parade in Winterset and had all-state auditions on October 26th. They now are preparing for the Skiba High School Jazz Festival on December 12th while also practicing for the Winter Concert. The Winter Concert will be held on January 7th, 2016 at 6 p.m. The band will be playing some great songs like a Canadian Brass Christmas Suite, Heartbeat 5, A Christmas Odd Lang Sign, and Radetzky March, conducted by Mr. Ron Reichman. I recently was able to speak to Mr. Sletton, Earlham's band director, about what he was most looking forward to about the upcoming concert, and his response was, Each of the pieces provides a different set of challenges for our students, musicians. I'm excited to see about how much we can accomplish stylistically. It sounds like it will be a great concert, and we wish the band the best of luck with their upcoming performances. Coming up after the break, we will give you a great preview of the upcoming winter sports seasons, including exclusive interviews with a few of the coaches. Stay tuned. <laughs> 